putting forward this workshop has been wonderful so far, and I have high expectations for the rest of it. So uh, in particular, let me uh, discuss a little bit a, a summary of, of what we have done regarding a chiral symmetry breaking in this theory reduced QED. In this session, we are trying to extend what we have discussed so far with QCD in the presence of magnetic fields to other fields of physics. So it's a, it's a strong connection in here. And this collaboration has, has been done with, with friends and colleagues from, from different countries, from, with Ana Julia here in Brazil, with some friends in Chile and also in, in Mexico. So it, it's based basically on these two works, uh, this that is here, and a summary of non-perturbative aspects of this theory that we have recently published in Revista Mexicana de Física. The idea is trying to motivate how it is worth to, to build bridges between what has been done in condensed matter physics or needs to be done to develop that part in connection with what has uh, been done and is discussed in, in this workshop in QCD. In particular, I will refer to the chiral magnetic effect in high energy physics and condensed matter and see that there is a natural uh, meeting point for discussing some ideas in here. And uh, we are, uh, in particular, we are uh, interested in motivating this effect in, in a theory that mixes the, the dynamics of the matter fields and the gauge fields, which is reduced quantum electrodynamics, a, a natural uh, framework to explore two-dimensional materials, which nevertheless feel the effects of external uh, usual three-dimensional electromagnetic fields. For that purpose, I will discuss a, a simple setup of the gap equation uh, through the schwinger dyson uh, framework to explore the effects of chiral symmetry breaking by considering a chern simons terms and also parity and temporal violation in this, in this regard. And uh, at the end, I will try to see what are the discussions that we are uh, considering right now in, in the group to take a, a closer look at what happens with this theory. Now, uh, what is the, the, the motivation on, on one hand in the high energy physics realm we have the chiral magnetic effect, that is the uh, chirality flips uh, of quarks that are interact interacting with a topological uh, gauge field in heavy ion collision environments, where we know a strong magnetic fields are generated and then the circumstances for this effect to take place were highly expected to be observed recently, so uh, we have uh, yesterday heard that there are still some efforts to continue to uh, looking for, for signals of this effect, in, in, in these heavy ion experiments, but also during the, the development of, of the research, it, it has also been noticed that in three-dimensional crystals, this uh, separation or, or, or chirality flip can be observed in other crystal materials. Uh, basically, the idea uh, of CME was uh, uh, to propose a proof of the topological nature of the QCD vacuum in, in this scenario of, of, of heavy ion collisions. And uh, the, the observable that comes here is a current, an electric current, which is uh, parallel to the magnetic field that, that comes here. And this uh, uh, chirality flipping is uh, produced by the interaction of, of quarks with a chiral, uh, through a chiral anomaly in this sense. So what we are trying to do is trying to cook a model in, for condensed matter physics that actually has uh, analog, uh, analog uh, ingredients for this scenario to take place. And uh, because this effect has not been observed so far, but, uh, what we want to, to do is, well, let's see what people is doing in condensed matter physics realm. They have, uh, this effect has been already explored in, in this type of materials through a, a coupling of, or to an alignment of electric and magnetic fields which uh, cause the, the, the chirality flip in this kind of materials. And again, the observed current is very similar to what is observed in the CME, usually in heavy ion collisions, but this M5 uh, chemical potential is proportional to the dot product of these, these two fields. Uh, now, what, what we were wondering for, for a few years already is, well, this is, this is a, so, some of the results which are like a, like a smoking gun of what happens with the CME in, in, in this type of materials, which, why, by the way, has been observed in, in many crystals already. So the, the main question that we uh, have asked ourselves is, 
Is it possible to observe this uh, an analogous of the CME, but in two dimensional materials? And uh, we have just uh, uh, had a talk with a, a, a very nice review of the crystallogra crystallographic properties of the honeycomb lattice, which come here. And the relevant connection for us is the, what happens near the Dirac points, where the uh, dispersion relation is linear, and therefore the effective Hamiltonian resembles that of a high energy quarks uh, or high energy particles, but with a Fermi velocity instead of the speed of light coming here. So uh, it, with this idea in mind, can, can we observe this effect in a two-dimensional material? Uh, we, we have explored uh, different scenarios, and we came with, with this theory, which is a, a, a mixed-dimensional theory where the gauge and matter fields live in different dimensions. So basically, what one has is a, 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 a version of quantum electrodynamics where the matter current is constrained to a plane, but the electric and magnetic fields are allowed to move throughout space. And this theory has been developed in several contexts uh, uh, by several groups uh, already and uh, allow a neat, from our point of view, a neat description of what happens in two-dimensional materials with the interactions with external fields that are uh, uh, accessible in the laboratory. So this uh, theory has been uh, given different names. For instance, uh, some groups called reduced QED or pseudo QED. And, and the basic idea with this is that in the gauge sector, the gauge fields remain unconstrained to move on a plane. That basically means that uh, these gauge fields uh, can move throughout space, and, uh, but its influence is only felt by, 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 the, by the matter fields on the plane. And uh, the second important ingredient of this theory is the static interactions uh, between the charges in, in, in this uh, two-dimensional material should be of, of, of the Coulomb type, may, namely to the, uh, that, 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 that go as the inverse of the distance rather than the logarithmic interactions that one would have in ordinary QED. And the, the first, uh, uh, the, sorry, the third important part is to perform a dimensional reduction we have to integrate the third spatial dimension of the gauge fields and end up with an effective non-local theory for the, the, the dynamics of, of charged particles in, in a plane. And this is the theory, the, the actual result of reduced QED. So with these ingredients at hand, what, uh, what we are trying to do is what, what do we need in order to observe an analog effect of the chiral magnetic effect? So, what we need from the gauge fields is that uh, these are, uh, have to be non-perturbative integrated over this C dimension, and then the current along this, this third spatial dimension should vanish. And when we add the fermions, the effective action that comes here already shows this interesting operator here that is the square root of the D'Alembertian operator that comes here in the, in, in the kinetic term for, for the gauge fields and also appears in the gauge fixing part. But fermions are basically the same, only constrained to a plane. Uh, that means that even though the theory becomes highly uh, uh, non-local, still with one kind of find, the, the, the Green's functions and this have the, a, a well-behaved uh, form that is familiar, for instance, for the inverse of the, of the propagator. And because we are thinking basically on two-dimensional materials like graphene, where there is no mass gap, present, we are only considering the, the massless propagator in here. But for photons, it happens a very interesting uh, uh, part. Uh, the, the, the infrared behavior of the propagator soften, softens with re respect to the ordinary theory, where it goes like 1 over q squared. It, it, it goes only as 1 over q. And this slight, apparently harmless difference makes a lot of, of, of sense when one is constrained to a plane and also changes the structure of the theory in, in several regards. Also, the gauge fixing parameter, when we integrated out the, the third component of the gauge field, is not the same. So one has to take it into account when one uh, is uh, pursuing a non-perturbative study uh, through, for instance, the Schwinger-Dyson equations in here. Here, the dimensions are uh, only the, the, the dimensions of the plane. Ah. It, it is true. It is true. There are, there are some, some interesting features that, that happen in this field. No? 
But the, the dimensions are, are, are corrected here if you add this zeta there with the corresponding dimensions here. But, but zeta, zeta is the dimension there? No, you, you need to, to have the same dimensions that, that here in these terms. Okay? That is why the, this zeta that, that, that comes as, as a gauge fixing parameter should be reinterpreted with respect to, to the, the gauge fixing parameter of the theory we started with. Okay? Um, now, how, how do we add the chern simons term? The chern simons term is basically added through this uh, effective Lagrangian, where this is the chern simons coefficient. And here we are considering uh, abelian fields. We are not considering the, the coupling of, of this, this A with, with itself. And in this, in this particular theory, this, this, this coefficient is massless. It, it doesn't have dimensions. And therefore, it does not describe a, a, a topological mass for the photon. It is, it is a, 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 a dimensionless parameter that comes here. And through the introduction of this Lagrangian, in the Lagrangian of Q, uh, reduced QED, it basically modifies the, 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 the photon propagator through this, this, this term that eventually like, plays the role of an, an effective dielectric constant in, in this theory. So we see here that the, the effect of the, of the chern simon terms amount to, to consider a theory with a non-trivial or, or, or not the vacuum uh, dielectric constant of, of this material. So uh, this, is, this is what I have already said. And this is because uh, 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 this chern simon coefficient is dimensionless as well as the coupling, the, the electromagnetic coupling of reduced QED is the same as a, a, in ordinary QED. And therefore, there is no topological mass for the photon. And this is because it, 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 RQED is a, a, a scale invariant theory that, that has some. And this scale invariant also have a parameter Okay, but uh, the, the, the point is that this coefficient that comes in here is it does not transmute the dimensions to, to, to the to the, the setup, yeah the setup, the setup yes what 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 we are saying is that at the end of the day we will choose this the, we will deal with what is the behavior of this gauge par, gauge parameter dependence but the theory has been proven to be a scale invariant okay we we can we can check this part uh, now. What, what is the, the important part uh, of, of, of the presence of the chern simon in the theory? That it could induce the, the Dirac and Haldan mass terms for the fermions. And when we have these, these two uh, type of fermions, it means that the theory, uh, uh, this, this, neither of, of these two correspond to poles of the propagators. And then, therefore, one has to make appropriate combinations of them in order to define appropriately the mass of, of fermions. And this can, do, this can be done by introducing the chiral fields. We, we, we introduce this chiral projector in terms of this tau matrix, which is this, this commutator that comes here. And this is basically because on the plane, we only need uh, three Dirac matrices uh, for describing the dynamics. And so we are left with an additional gamma 3 and gamma 5 because we are using a, a reducible representation. That means four component fermion fields to describe this theory. So this, this, two, this tau uh, matrix allows to, to decompose the, the, the projectors in, in left and right, if you wish. Uh, and these projectors have exactly the, the properties that we demand from them. So the, the Dirac mass term is the usual term that comes in the Lagrangian. And it is invariant on the parity and type and time reversal, but it breaks explicitly chiral symmetry defined through this, trans, to, to this tau matrix that comes here. Whereas the, the Haldan mass term is a chirally invariant, but breaks the, the discrete symmetries of parity and time reversal. So when one uh, uh, writes down the, the, the Dirac Lagrangian, one has to, to do it in terms of two fermion species with different masses. One is m plus and one is, is m minus. When one is the sum and the other is the difference of, of the Dirac and Haldan mass. And in this basis, one can simply see what happens with the masses of these fermions through interactions. Now, uh, how do we set the gap equation in, in this case? In this case, uh, let, let's see how, 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 do, how do we work? Because uh, within the framework of, of schringer dyson equations, we need to start with, with the two-point functions. And, and this is the self-energy for the fermions and for the photons. And in the, in the parity invariant theory, we look for solutions of this type 
for the fermion propagator. Let me just review what has been done in literature regarding this, this, uh, these considerations. And what we have here is that in, in the simplest approximation, which is the rainbow ladder truncation, and choosing particularly what would correspond to the Landau gauge in this theory, we have this uh, nonlinear integral equation that needs to be solved in order to have uh, uh, the mass of the propagator, uh, sorry, the mass of the fermions dynamically generated. Unlike the theory of QED, uh, in QED, ordinary QED, we would have here a Q square uh, and the structure of this integral equation changes because the power of, of, of this photon propagator uh, uh, changes in, in this particular theory. Sorry? It's P minus Q. P, P, sorry, P, P minus K. This is, this is, this is Q. Sorry, uh, uh, but this, is, this equation that we obtain in reduced QED has already been considered in a different theory. Ordinary QED with logarithmic int static interactions, but in one particular approximation when there are a, a loops of massless fermions circulating. So in this case, in the large NF approximation, the, 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 mass or the, the gap equation reads like this. And so there is a natural mapping between the values of M and sigma. This is the theory in QED. This is the, th the theory in reduced QED because the behavior also in this theory softens uh, 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 as it appears in here. And therefore, one can simply take this well-known structure of, of, of the solutions of, of, to this gap equation simply by replacing the, the, eigen, the, the, the coefficient that comes here, the coupling, that, that comes here, that is lambda, that is written in terms of the number of fermion families that, that appear in here. And so in, in, in ordinary QED, back to the 80s, we know that there exists a critical number of fermion flavors above which chiral symmetry is restored. That means that uh, you cannot longer generate masses for fermions if you uh, are above you're considering a theory with a, a large number of fermion families that comes here. And this translates to the fact that in reduced QED, you would need a critical value, uh, a, a, a critical value of this coupling in order to have non-trivial solutions to the gap equation. So this criticality is summarized here. You need a N, a NF critical favor of fermion, critical number of fermion flavors to restore chiral symmetry, but this means that in reduced QED, we need a critical value of the coupling, which numerically one can compute and, uh, with the conventions that we are using is this value pi over eight. Uh, uh, and we need our coupling of the theory to exceed this critical value in order to break chiral symmetry. So this is in the, in the parity preserving theory. So we ask ourselves what happens if we switch on the effect of, of, of the Chern-Simons terms with the same assumptions, with the same conventions that other people have tried before in literature. And in this case, what we have is that the gap equation modifies. There is a, a one gap equation for the positive uh, chirality and one for the, for the negative chirality that comes here. And it's a little bit more intricate, but nevertheless, it can be solved. It can, uh, uh, in some uh, particular limit, one can see that the, the coupling uh, the critical coupling to, to start breaking chiral symmetry is now slightly shifted by the presence of this coefficient that comes here, which is expected somehow from the physical point of view because we have an effective dielectric constant that, that, that should be considered throughout the, the studies that we are performing. So we now allow uh, to vary. We, we, we are now in a position in which we consider the coupling to exceed this, this value and start observing the, the behavior of, of, of the solutions in terms of this coefficient that comes here. We basically start, let this, this, this parameter run, and what we observe is the following. The, the green curve means that we have the theta parameter equal to zero. So we have the, the generate masses for, for the fermions in here, and uh, so, so long as we are increasing the value of theta, what we see is that the mass function is also increasing the height in deep infrared uh, momentum. This height is related to the amount of mass that is dynamically generated in this theory. Now, what we observe what happens in, in, with, the, with the other chirality, we observe that if theta equals zero, we have the highest uh, height of the mass function and it starts diminishing until at a critical value, it also flips sign. The height becomes negative. 
And uh, th th there is a critical value where this happens. And above this value, all solutions that we have uh, are only reflected here for, from the horizontal axis. And this means if we go back to the Dirac and Haldane masses rather to the positive and negative solutions, that the first, uh, what, what happens here is that if I plot not the mass, but uh, the height, but the absolute value of the height, what we observe is that a critical value, both m plus and m minus, have the same, the same absolute value. And it, mean, it means that both of them have a, this, the, the, these have become degenerating in mass. And because one is the sum and the other is, is the subtraction of the two, it only could mean that the chiral symmetry, that means the Dirac mass, is no longer generated above this critical value. All we have from here onward is only due to the Haldane mass that comes in here. So it means that the, this, this theta parameter uh, actually restores chiral symmetry as uh, one expects uh, fr from the, the, the physical effect of, of this, this uh, behavior. So there are a number of questions that remain there. So what happens with the assumptions that you have made? What happens if you introduce some other effects like finite temperature, finite density? What, what, what could happen in that case? So what we have, uh, we have learned so far is that uh, as long as we consider the, the, the Chern-Simons terms, we need to take into account that the masses for fermions that are generated include both the Dirac and the Haldane uh, uh, bilinears in the, in, the, in the effective Lagrangian. And uh, if we have a, a, a coupling above the critical value in this theory, then we would generate di dynamically uh, the masses of the Dirac type. If we don't reach this value, we could only uh, uh, have access to the Haldane mass term through the theta value of, of, of the chern simons term. Uh, but once we are here, once we are above the critical value, uh, and because the, the effect of the chern simon is to act to as an effective dielectric constant, this parameter actually restores chiral symmetry. And the transition that is observed in here, I, I come back again, is because it is discontinuous, you can associate it to a first order transition. And this transition, uh, we, we have observed that, that also can be translated to the behavior of currents that, that are generated in, in this type of model, which we somehow can, can see as an effective or a very uh, simple-minded toy model for QCD, but also like that it has the, the, the key ingredients to observe the chiral magnetic effect in two-dimensional materials. Effects of chiral, uh, sorry, of finite temperature, for instance, have the, uh, are such that uh, at a uh, critical value that when we start heating the, 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 the system, eventually there is a, a critical temperature ab ab above which chiral symmetry is also uh, restored, and we have discussed that, I I I this, this issue in, in this paper, and we are now considering what happens if we add density to this scenario, and, th and this, this is work in progress that we have here. Now, the, the, the other issue that one has already in mind is what happens with gauge invariance? <laughs> What happens when, when the, what is the, the meaning of this parameter that we are choosing, and how are we varying and trusting that our, our scenario is, is valid in here? Well, that, that is a, 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 a recent preprint that has already been accepted for publication, but is not ready to be published yet, uh, in which we consider the more educated truncation of Schringer Dyson equation, which already takes into account how to deal with this gauge fixing. Sorry, let me come back to. What, how to deal with this gauge fixing parameter that comes here in terms of, of non-local gauge that, that we require here, and then uh, dressing the vertex appropriately to get rid of any spurious gauge dependence that might remain after the truncation of, of the Schringer Dyson equation. So all of these are, uh, uh, ideas are already being considered in our group, and, and of course, eventually we are considering also the influence of uh, static magnetic fields uh, in this scenario, and this, this is uh, for the future. I, I hope to report in the next version of this workshop. Thank you so much. Questions? Uh, thank you very much. Very nice talk. Uh, 
I would like to see the first slide. I would like to 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 have the reference. Ah, uh, uh, very interesting work. No, no. This oh, one. Oh, this one. This one, I guess. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. What? I can also. I, 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 yes, of oh, course. Okay, but I can. But I can find it here also. There's a lot of possibilities. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. David, David wanted to. Sorry, Christian. Uh, it's just a phenomenological question, Alfredo. The critical value of the coupling, how realistic is it compared to materials? Do you have any idea? It's way too high. In, in, in this simple-minded study, it's way too high to be achievable in, in actual experiments. But when we address the vertex, uh, we observe that it diminishes like half the way. Still half the way is, is not uh, that close to experiments, but at least it gives a hint of what has to be done uh, to look for this kind of material. Mm -hmm. More questions? Sorry, uh, maybe I'm wrong, but the, the, I, th I thought the couplings in, in this QED, well, at least in QED3, are, uh, has dimensions. Uh, yes. And in, in the reduced QED, it hasn't? No. So, uh, in reduced QED, a, you are dealing with the same uh, fine structure constant than in, in ordinary QED. But, it, it doesn't okay. have the dimensions. Ah, because you... you yeah, no. that, that is not a, a dimensional transmutation in this case. Oh, okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, thank you for the talk. I mean, uh, so I, I'd like you to, to go to the last slide, or maybe you don't need to go. You just mentioned the, the QCD application. Uh -huh. And I'm curious to, to know what you have in mind, because you're doing 2 plus 1, right? And then condensed matter is pretty natural for me, if you're thinking about like the whole effect where it probably all started, uh, and, and then with the layers of graphene and so on. It's not really the case in QCD, so what, what do you have in mind? Okay, uh, what happens is uh, in the very high temperature limit, there is a natural dimensional reduction of QCD to a two plus one uh, dimension, effective dimensions work, work move. But in this particular regime, it, it is also observed in that in the, in the large NF limit, some planar, uh, some non-planar diagrams uh, are, are, are canceled. And so in a, in a sense, this, this is like if you have Q, QCD with uh, uh, just one species of quarks or two species of quarks in there. It's just like a, a toy model in this, in this regard. Thank you, Alfredo. Very short question. I didn't understand quite well the meaning of this zeta parameter that plays the role of a gauge fixing, and it's non-local. I mean, which, which, is, which is the idea behind it? Basically, the, the zeta parameter is related to the xi parameter, which comes with the gauge fixing, but it, the gauge fixing term comes with this uh, half oh. uh, square root of the, of the D'Alembertian. It, it includes the inverse of the, okay. In, in that regards, that, that connects in, 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 this, in this form. Okay, thank you, sorry. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Alfredo. Um, one simple-minded question, I, 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 it's bugging me. You have a critical value of the coupling, right? But you're working at a fixed gauge, I guess. So your rainbow ladder approximation is fixed. So if you change the, the gauge, you were going to change the coupling as well, the critical coupling. Now, uh, given that there are these ideas about that the, the, the coupling needs to fill also the medium, um, what can you say about uh, uh, having a, a critical coupling that depends on gauge, but it perhaps maybe filling the medium? One of the things in, in, in this work is that Precisely, we know from the Schwinger Dyson point of view that the rainbow ladder already induces a spurious gauge dependence to everything that we said. In particular, what, what, what one observes is that if we change the gauge, also the critical coupling depends on the gauge. But when we dress the, the vertex, we go beyond the rainbow ladder truncation, we can make the critical coupling independent of, of, of the choice of the gauge. 
And once you are there, then you are ready to, to calculate uh, medium corrections to, to, to this effective conflict. No? Once we are there, uh, and, and I guess it's, it's, it's the next step to be undertaken. Yeah. Uh, so have you thinking in including some, I mean, you are working on the chiral limit, right? So adding some mass terms to try to understand this, if the coupling change with, the, with some impurities or deformation that came from the asymmetry from the net? Uh, we haven't thought of that, but it, it could be relevant for, for what we are saying, yeah. More questions? No more, please, thanks, Alfredo again.